in the summer of 1893 in Chicago, as part of, slightly to the side of the Columbian World's Fair, a young historian called Frederick Jackson Turner gave probably the most famous academic historical paper ever given in the summer of 1893. It was called The Significance of the Frontier in American History. And in it, what he was doing was creating a new explanation of the entirety of not just United States history, but basically all history of Western civilization. He said, the way to understand and explain Western civilization um, is through the concept, the notion of the frontier. And the way to study American civilization, the history of the United States, is by uh, studying the frontier, using, seeing, understanding the frontier. His vision of the frontier was encapsulated by uh, a few sentences he said early on in the, in the speech. He said, the wilderness masters the colonist. It takes him from the railroad car and places him in the birch canoe. It strips him of the clothing of, the, of civilization and arrays him in a hunting shirt and a moccasin. Um, it basically, the, the frontier process is a process of breaking down the civilization of, uh, of Europe, uh, and in its place, creating the room for some kind of new thing to grow. So the process of going to the frontier, the act of going to the frontier, to the edge of uh, what Turner thought of as civilization, to a place where no uh, other civilized people were, a place where um, normal ways of living for European people, normal forms of what Turner thought of as civilization, didn't exist, going there turned people from one kind of thing into another kind of thing. Um, it stripped them away, and then gradually, bit by bit, it allowed them to build back a different kind of civilization, a different kind of way of living, a different kind of character that was no longer uh, European, but was now American, and therefore, obviously, better. Um, his paper does more than that. It, it gives a kind of wide-reaching explanation or a wide-reaching interpretation of Western history that goes through several different waves of different kinds of settlement. He doesn't see um, the frontier as being a single line of movement from east to west across the North American continent. He sees a multitude of waves of colonization and settlement, uh, a repeating process um, of constantly kind of returning back to the origins of civilization um, and rebuilding it once again. So the first, the early frontier to the east of the Appalachian Mountains on the very kind of eastern coast of the United States, the first uh, European colonists have to rebuild their civilization, have to rebuild um, and turn themselves into these new kind of American men. Successive waves of uh, pioneering and frontiering um, moving towards the Mississippi River, uh, eventually making their way to the Rocky Mountains, to California, crossing over the continent. Um, and not just each of these kind of geographical places, but also through uh, various different economic forms, through various different resource extracting processes. Um, each wave of this of Turnerian frontier uh, kind of successively creates the, the conditions for the one that follows it. So the first frontier in Turner's vision is a fur trader's frontier. These are the people, these are in some ways the kind of most pioneering uh, of the frontiersmen. They were kind of able to make their way into Native American society, into the, 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 the center of an unknown continent in order to trade and learn and discover uh, and bring back uh, really valuable uh, commodities for the European market. These people, uh, fur trading frontiersmen, often backed by state enterprises like the Hudson Bay Company, made their way into the continent and uh, settled, spread the conditions and the possibilities for new waves of settlers to, to follow behind, uh, new um, uh, transportation routes, new knowledge of the geography of the West, um, new possibilities and opportunities for uh, people from Europe and from the already settled portions of North America to, to move westward into new places. Just by saying uh, what I just said, that 
people from Europe and people from the already settled portions of North America kind of gives away part of the game of what Turner's doing, where he's saying, if you look at, if you follow a kind of map of America across from uh, east to west, you can see successive, more or less advanced uh, waves of civilization. And I keep using words as I'm describing these, uh, this talk that Turner gave in 1893. I keep using words like civilization, like um, uh, Western civilization, like European ways, normal ways of living, all these kinds of things that historians today would never use, okay? So the story, the Turnerian story of the West that I'm telling about uh, the kind of pioneering bravery and success and triumph of um, successive waves of settlers and migrants moving into the West, uh, creating civilization, rebuilding it anew, continual renewal on the frontier, um, what he sees as developing a new form of civilization and character where American values of democracy and um, uh, ingenuity come from. All of that is a story that isn't what historians today would tell us about the West, isn't a kind of accurate, uh, if you want, depiction of the real history of the West. But what it is, is a story packaged for the needs of the present moment that, that Turner lived in. Um, it was an idea that was powerful and evocative to his audience in late 19th century Chicago, a place that kind of in some ways embodied the image that he's talking about, a place that was at this point in 1893, a kind of center of Western civilization. In fact, that summer, like I said, they're, they're hosting the Columbian World's Fair, a um, exhibition designed to showcase the progress of Western civilization, the progress of humanity as a civilized uh, singular kind of organism. So at this World's Fair, they have kind of anthropological exhibits where they show the past of humanity, the kind of deep past, the uh, ways of living of primitive uh, peoples from around the world, and they have the most modern technology, the newest forms of architecture, uh, the newest forms of art and things like that. Um, this World's Fair was supposed to represent how far uh, the world and humanity has come, how far America has helped bring the world. And it's situated in Chicago, a place that only about 50 years before was more or less a frontier town of a few thousand people um, on the edge of civilization, uh, uh, on, the, on civilization's western edge, according to Turner. So the story that he told was a powerful one. Um, one of the ways that his story can be read, one of the ways that his story was powerful was in its simplicity, in its ability to explain American society, democracy, values and, and items of character that people felt they held dear, or felt that were true. Um, its ability to explain all that through a single process, through a single uh, movement, a single concept, the concept of the frontier. Its simplicity also extends, under one possible reading, to being a moral simplicity, a basic struggle that we might know from kind of Western films, uh, which drew a lot on this kind of concept, a basic struggle between good and evil, a struggle to uh, introduce law where there was once chaos, order where there was once disorder, to bring civilization to a world of savagery. Uh, that moral kind of simplicity that moral story about the progress and success of American civilization is part of or one way in which Turner's uh, account of the frontier uh, was successful and caught people's imagination in this moment of kind of triumphal uh, self-examination at the Columbian World's Fair. But that's not the only possible way to read Turner's story or to think about the concept of the frontier. And you'll note that in this talk, I'm not telling you very much about the real history of the West, the kind of history of the American West or the frontier that historians today are writing about. I'm talking to you about something that I think will resonate more with everyone or anyone who's ever seen a cowboy and Indian film or a Western film or anyone who's kind of ever imagined themselves in the West. Um, I'm talking about a kind of mythical idea of the West that in some ways was created by this American historian in the late 19th century. Um, of course, other people alongside him were helping to create this mythology. 
just about the time Turner was giving his talk in 1893, uh, a young historian called uh, Theodore Roosevelt was working on his own book called The Winning of the West, which tells a similar story over four kind of lengthy volumes. Uh, you might know that he later became president of the United States in an era uh, called the Progressive Era when basically uh, Americans were confident about their future and their ability to transform and improve civilization. Um, quite different from the time that we live in today in some ways. Um, but like I said, you don't have to read Turner's story of the frontier and you don't have to read uh, the concept of the frontier as a simplistic question of good and evil or as a simplistic question of um, civilization progressing from savagery. I think you can read it a lot more ambivalently than that. I think um, when Turner says early in his talk that at first the wilderness masters the colonist, that in order to create a new kind of way of living, you have to strip away the trappings of civilization. He's incorporating into his understanding of the American West a critique of civilization as well as a celebration of its progress. When we think about the West uh, and the frontier, um, we think just as much about um, what's good about leaving behind civilization, why we might want to go to a place that looks like this rather than a place that looks like Chicago today. Um, the West kind of pulls us away from civilization, and that's part of its power. What the frontier does, the frontier is a, a non-existent place, right? But what it does is it creates a kind of line, an imaginary line. It invites you to step over the line out of civilization and then to look back at the civilization that you've left. So in, some, in many ways, this concept isn't about the West. It isn't about the empty lands, the supposedly empty lands, that, the free lands that Turner talks about. It's about looking at American society itself and by extension larger uh, kind of Western society, English-speaking society, looking at that world from the perspective of somewhere else. Um, to think about the creation of new civilization from a return to uh, uncivilized state, from a return to uh, nature, is to think about the flaws in the existing civilization that we have, is to think about um, what we might want to strip away from our world, from our society, from our, our way of living. And that's been a powerful element of Western thinking since the 18th century, since the Enlightenment. People, um, a critique of civilization, a critique of society, as well as a, um, a celebration of progress. The reason I think uh, it's important, and the reason I think the myth of the West continues to resonate amongst people. I think the reason that we chose the theme of frontier for this meeting, the reason that we still use the word frontier when we want to describe exciting things about our future and the success and power of our civilization, when we use the word frontier to describe our scientific discoveries, when we use the word frontier to describe our hopes, our expectations, our ability to kind of go beyond the present world, we are doing that because of the resonance of the kind of idea that, that Turner is putting forward. We're doing that because of the image of the West in our minds, the image of the possibilities that that creates and allows. Um, and that is an image not just of triumphalism, but an image of um, self-doubt and reflexivity, an image of uh, a, a, a concept that allows us to stand on both sides of civilization and to uh, see it working uh, together in, in all of its contradictions. When um, we take the triumphal good versus evil, white hats versus black hats, cowboys and Indians understanding of the West, which is one element, one possible way of reading uh, the, the importance of the frontier, we're seeing history and the progress of humanity in a, in a kind of Manichean two-part system where there is us and civilization on one side of a line and something other, some kind of 
darkness on the other side of the line that needs to be moved, that needs to be conquered and transformed and changed. But when we understand it as I've been trying to describe as a uh, mirror that reflects civilization back, um, then I think we see history differently. For Turner, you didn't have to look very far to um, see what was savage about the civilization of the 1890s. Only the year after he gave his talk in Chicago in 1893, the following year, one of the bloodiest railroad strikes uh, of the late 19th century, the Pullman strike uh, on the outskirts of Chicago, uh, halted most of the railroads across America, most railroads west of Detroit, um, were brought to a standstill by collective action of the workers um, fighting for better pay and conditions against their railroad bosses, only to be stopped um, and cleared away by the power of the government, the power of President Grover Cleveland, who had been at the Columbia World's Fair the year before. Um, that battle a year later, which ended with dozens of people dead, dozens of railroad workers shot by the uh, um, National Guard, that struggle symbolizes, in some ways, the savagery of the civilization that um, Turner was asking people, I think, to look back on when he was talking about the frontier, when he was asking them to step over this imaginary line into a world, an, a world of the frontier, and to look back at their own civilization and think about it. History isn't a thing of two parts, a thing of good versus evil or white versus black. It's an infinitely complex combination um, of things. It is a process that emerges out of its contradictions. And the frontier is a place that allows us to dissolve those contradictions into each other and see history in its wholeness. I think if we want to understand the real frontiers of uh, human history and the progress of civilization, we don't just need to look um, at the American West or at desert places, places that are not yet fully settled. We don't just need to look to the stars and to space, as we're going to do later today, but we also need to look at ourselves, because that is the frontier between savagery and civilization.